I mean, we just saw the Biden administration attack uh, Hunter's education and, you know, in schools. I mean, we have my dad grew up and he tells me stories about how, how he used to ride the bus with a, a 22 rifle to go to shooting team after school. And this was in Buffalo, New York. I mean, well, yeah. see how I, I much that has changed. My word's not yours. I think they need to be worried about the other Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> What is up, 2A family? It is Matt Brass from Whiskey and Windage, the 2A podcast for the people, by the people. I'm joined by my partners in crime here, Adam and Mike. How are we doing today, gentlemen? Oh, man, this is a great day, great show. Actually, I'm excited for the show, and uh, kudos to Mike for getting this show put together. Uh, it's going to be a good one. Yeah, dude. Um, I couldn't think of any better way to kick off uh, ATF month than to get GOA on and, you know, get someone who fights for the rights. And uh, yeah, man, it's just going to be a good show. Hell yeah. I'm super excited about the show we got planned today. We got John from GOA coming in to talk about the Gold Summit coming up in August. Boys, what else have we got today? Man, I want to give a quick shout out. Um, typically, we don't shout out a lot of the people on the t-shirts anymore, but uh Am shouting out the uh, the homie Tyler over at Refracted Wolf Apparel and Antihero Podcast. Um, there's a coupon code. You got to watch the show. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. If we're but, shouting out Tyler. If we're shouting out Tyler, hold up. We're gonna uh -oh. we're, we're, oh, gonna, no. we're we're gonna do this right, guys. <laughs> well, here hold, I'll let it. You can read the back of my what? shirt while looking at that. Oh, Woo! We got the Ranger panties. Hold, Refracted hold Wolf Ranger peace. panties. Oh yeah. yeah. Forever hold oh, your yeah. peace. It reminds hey, me yeah, of Adam last time talking about. You holding something, there's a micro explosion in your hand. So, oh, and by the way, know. guys, if you have any questions about Refract Wolf, you can call Tyler at let me look his phone number up. Uh, one, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> no, yeah, for real, I mean, that's all we got. Yeah, yeah, shout out to uh, Refracted Wolf, shout out to Anti Hero Podcast. If you guys haven't already, that's our friends over there, our boys at Anti Hero Podcast. Go give them a check out. Give them a quick listen. They'll drop a, a discount code for y'all on that refracted wolf apparel. But without further ado, let's jump right into it. We got John from GOA. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Today we want to welcome on John from GOA. John, welcome to Whiskey and Windage. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing great. Thank you guys for having me on. Uh, I'm super excited about the show tonight. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Dude, so GOA has a little like soft spot in our heart. I know that we are, we're excited. We are, we are planning on going to the uh, goals event in, uh, in August. So we're super what? excited. Oh, dude. Yeah. So GOA is definitely something I know we're all GOA members as well. Uh, in my opinion, it is the one organization that actually truly fights for 2A. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. Well, thank you guys for having me. You know, we pride ourselves in fighting for the 2A every day, every way we can. So we're just, I'm just happy to be here, and goals is a it's a soft pot in my heart because I'm the one helping planning it all. So uh, I keep screwing up and calling it the goals summit. So I put the S on it for summit and then say summit, and I'm like, I just I just gotta <laughs> quit that because I'm like I'm doubling up here. I gotta I gotta stop this shit. Head of um, the department of the redundancy department. <laughs> yeah, you got that right, man. So just kind of to get started, man. Why don't you kind of talk about as far as you know. Give a little background on yourself as far as GOA goes. So on myself, I started with GOA in July of last year. So I've been in the firearms industry for about 12 years now. I started off at, behind the counter at a gun shop and then worked my way up to working at a company called Fax and Firearms where I was okay. in the sales department. I've heard of, there. I've heard of it. Oh, yeah. I bought a couple barrels just from those guys. Just a little guys. company from Fax and, you know. Just a little small company. Um, but I was in the sales department over there. And then uh, after that, I got the director of sales from Fax and Left. We went over and worked for an ammo uh, wholesaler, did some stuff there, did all their marketing over there. And then uh, I decided, you know what, it's time to move on. And Kaylee, my boss, called me and was like, hey, there's an opening for GOA. I heard you're looking to move. And I think I found my forever home. I'm, I'm loving it over here. This is one of the best job I've ever had, I'm going to say. Hell yeah. Dude, I love that. I love that. Yeah, and I like that you went. For, you came from Faxon. I mean, Faxon, 
dude, I, I got nothing but, you know, good things to say about Faxon. Um, they're good. I'm a dealer for them. So I, I love it. I definitely love it. Um, I guess my next question would be like, how did you, you know, what got you involved, I guess, in the 2A advocacy? I mean, like the light bulb moment, you know, when did you feel like, you know, everybody, I mean, I'd like to think it's not, I know it's not true because not everybody likes guns, but you know, I like to think in my world, everybody wakes up and it's like, oh my gosh, I love guns. But there's that light bulb moment, even for, you know, gun aficionados to where like, hey, my rights matter. Exactly. Um, um, what what was that for you? My light bulb moment had to be I was working for this uh, big box retailer that begins with the letter D um, oh. in college uh, behind the gun counter. And when they when they had a gun counter, when they had a gun counter okay. and when they took a bunch of stuff away, that's when I realized like, hey, overnight things like this could happen. So I started really slowly getting into that and helping and then. Uh, fighting at least from behind the counter, fighting with the the people, the powers that be. I decided to move on from there. Went to a, a company also that is now doesn't sell guns and is defunct. Is uh, begins with a G and ends with a mountain. Uh, worked there for a while, <laughs> and uh, left there and went and decided to go work for a gun store. In between that, I was doing uh, youth firearms training and was really enjoying that and just spreading that to a gospel to to a bunch of uh, younger kids. I actually, like, two months ago, one of the kids that I taught messaged me and was like, hey, I, I saw that you were on with PSR, and I love 3D printing stuff, and you, you led me down this path. So that brought a bunch of joys to my heart. That's one of the many stories of, of people, kids who've reached out over the years who've been doing, you know, who I taught. And then I worked for a small gun shop in Columbus, and decided there too i was doing a bunch of their social media pushing hard becoming that 2a advocate doing all their concealed carry classes teaching people about the 2a uh growing that that community there and then went, moved on to fax and kept growing it so I, i've been the light bulb moment was when everything came off the shelf and i was like this is like a stroke of a pen this stuff can be going man i love that you just said you were also helping with you know youth firearms training and everything because i mean you know, it's, we sound like a broken record, but we're supposed to. I mean, you know, that next generation, you know, the youth is that next generation demographic of voters. And, um, you know, I'm pretty sure that, you know, we're going to have our fights cut out for us. But, you know, firearms will be a consistent in my life. I'm pretty positive, um, yeah. but not so sure for them. Um, so, you know, the more and more that people are, are steered away from them by, you know, big media, um, you know, with their, you know, their mischaracterizations of firearms and what they actually are and what they actually can do. Um, you know, it, it just kind of, it's more important now than ever. And I, I'm truly one of the guys that believes without the second, you can't have the first. So yeah, I know. 100%. Yeah, well, it's really sad. So I started off with, uh, at this summer camp teaching youth, youth riflery, and then I became a master instructor in the number of summer camps that have taken away the shooting sports because of either insurance purposes or they're just not getting the drive or the pushback from parents. It's really scary. I used to go to four or five camps a summer and teach them how to, their instructors how to be instructors. I just went last weekend to one in North Carolina to teach, and I realized then, I'm like, wow, this has really gone away. And I, and I put the word in these and these instructors who were there, I think we were down to, when I first started doing it, we had six camps show up. Now I'm down to like three in just that's North Carolina. Crazy. And and that's in four years. So that's wow. 50% in four years. It's insane. So I, I, I put it in their head. I'm like, this is the next generation of shooting sports that you guys are going to be teaching all summer. you got to make it fun. you got to make it enjoyable. But you got to teach them. And watching that culture go away is really scary on my end. I mean, they're in for the long game. They're, let's be honest, gun grabbers, people that want to take away our rights, they, they know the short game's not – they're they're in it for the long haul. They they get that long game, and they're they're going after the youth for it, unfortunately. It sucks. Oh, it, it, it's awful how they're going after it. And now we just saw, you know, this, the, same, or, uh, the Uvalde victim suing the video yes. game companies and suing – Yeah, Daniel, Daniel Defense, right? Yeah, it's crazy. 
So it's just crazy how they're they're looking at it from a long game perspective, and that's one of them that they're going after a big way kids get into the two A's uh, or people in general get into the two A is through video games. We see we see it. We talked to EOTech on the on our podcast, and they were like, "Yeah, people come up to us all the time and just know the footprint." Yeah, it's it's interesting. I got into a conversation last night over dinner with a guy um, somewhere close to my house. I don't want to rain on any parades. But somewhere close to my house uh, in Nashville, this week there was a fifteen. There was a there was a fight at a park, and a fifteen year old kid shot a thirteen year old kid and his sister, and the thirteen year old died. And of course, the video gets released, and you can't really see the kid get shot. Thank goodness. But you know, you hear parents screaming, "So and so, get in the car!" Hey, you get in the car, and it's like, man, there's a hurt kid. Like administer help first. Quit trying to run. Um, but you know. The gun grabbers are saying, see, these kids are, you know, these kids are being brought, you know, they're not being taught, you know, safety and they're, you know, they're, how are these kids getting guns? And my argument last night over dinner was like, look, like I grew up in a gun loving family. You know, my earliest recollections, you know, without getting, you know, like my dad in trouble, like there was a gun at all times that if I wanted to go touch, I could touch. Um, but I asked, sitting at dinner, I asked, I said, you know, at what age is it appropriate to teach a kid not to touch a hot stove? At what age is it appropriate to not put your finger in a light socket? Uh, You know, these little things that are ingrained. And then I said, okay, well, at what age is it appropriate to teach a kid firearm safety? I'm not asking you to get out there and be proficient, you know, with the coolest, latest, and greatest version of an AR platform or a 2011, but if you open up a drawer and you're trying to get something out of the drawer and there's a pistol on top of it, you know, it should be locked away, but you know, not everybody's house is the same. So as a, as a kid, like you need to know f- basic firearm safety is like, don't touch it first off. But if you have to, how do you oh, check to see if it's loaded? How do you check to see these things? And I think the more that children are brought into it, not trying to raise super soldiers, the more they're familiar with it, I think the safer everyone's going to be. How old were, were you, you when, when they taught you to look both ways before you cross the street? Dude, it's so young that How I can't remember. How many cars did you run out in front of? Right? That's what I'm saying. It's knew. so young I yeah. couldn't remember it. But it's yeah. it's just sad in our country. And, I mean, I'm not going to fud out on everybody. But, you know, I didn't. I wasn't part of this. Well, I'm sure somewhere it was. But, you know, I didn't go to school with a shotgun in my, you know, or a rifle in the rack of my window of my truck. But, I mean, my parents did. And, you know, my older sister's generation did. It's just like, man, I mean, I don't think we need that anymore per se. Maybe we do. It's not my decision. But, I mean, kids nowadays, they need to be, they need to learn safety first. um, However that may be. I don't know. That's my thought on it. No, I can agree more. I mean, we just saw the Biden administration attack uh, Hunter's education and, you know, in schools. I mean, we have... My dad grew up, and he tells me stories about how, how he used to ride the bus with a, a twenty two rifle to go to shooting team after school, and this was in Buffalo, New York. I mean, well, yeah. see how I, I much think that has changed. My word's not yours. I think they need to be worried about the other, Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just me. I mean, they got, a, they got a big enough Hunter problem they need to worry about before they start worrying about Hunters that are taking freaking animals for food. So, I don't know. So, John, tell, uh, I mean, tell, we know, but tell the people who are listening to this show a little bit about GOA, what GOA actually does for our Second Amendment, and why you were drawn to choose GOA as the advocacy group that you were going to work for. So, GOA is Gunners of America. It started off in 1976 with H.L. Richardson and Larry Pratt. And they saw the writing on the wall in California, and they knew we got to go do something about it. So Larry uh, and and HL decided to step away from the NRA to go do their own thing and get stuff rolling on that part on their end in California. They found out very quickly that a state can't sue federally. A state org can't sue federally. So they decided to start Gun Owners of America. We are growing so and then in night as we grew from 76 to 83 83 we started gun owners foundation that's our lobbying arm so gun okay. owner foundation does all our lobbying 
they're the 501c3, where John Owners of America is a 501c4. I don't, can't explain all the differences, but there's differences, yeah. so I've been told. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. So we are also, so we are the only no compromise gun rights group. So we are constantly on the Hill. We actually have people in our Springfield office who are on the Hill every day lobbying and talking to senators and going through these bills. I mean, it's, it's crazy that there's one person in our office whose whole job is to read through bills and they have, they can't do control F. They have to read through because they'll spell gun G U and then space N or they'll put firearm and spell it wrong or they'll hide it in every little piece of legislation, some sort of gun control or something like that. So our team is constantly reading and then we go out and we sue. We sued on the pistol braces. We sued on the bump stocks. We sued on every, right now we just got an extension of our temporary restraining order in Texas for the uh, new ATF rule on business and what the definition of doing business. So all yeah, the that's a big one here. Okay. That's a big one. That's a big one here right now. Yeah. It's yeah. a huge, huge thing that we need to fight, but we, we are still fight. I mean, we just got uh, a couple months ago, we got president Biden to sign a pro gun legislation, which was our veterans. Uh, to protect our veterans. So if people didn't know, if you went to the VA looking for financial assistance, you got put on a list. Oh, he's rocking out down there. Yeah, uh, yeah you got me excited, <laughs> yeah, man. man. You got me excited, the veteran yeah. thing. So sorry, sorry. So we, we, we put it on, we've been fighting that bill and people don't think. It's been 20 years of fighting yeah. on that bill. And a lot of people come at GOA and go, why aren't you doing more? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you fighting here? The big thing is we are fighting. We are constantly fighting. The problem is legislation and legal action take forever. I mean, we just had our bump stock case go to the Supreme Court. Bump stocks were banned in, what, 2015? We're almost 10 years now still fighting bump stocks. We're still fighting. We we took the veterans thing and fought 20 years. So, unfortunately, our legal system is long and drawn out, and we can't fight immediately. But we have to set precedent for 2A constitutional law and go and fight it. So that's why we're so glad we've got Bruin and we've got – what is his name in D.C.? Heller. We got Dick Heller. Yes, Dick Heller. Heller Heller Foundation. Yeah. Heller Heller Foundation fighting with them and getting all these things fought, you know – it, it's a long, drawn-out process, and I wish it would go faster, personally, but that's one of them. Now, uh, the reason why I chose GOA is I was uh, – I found out about GOA, and, and ever, most people – like most people did, GOA is the, we like to call ourselves the old but young kids on the block because we've been yeah. around for about 50 years, but we have not been in the front of minds until about 2019. And yeah. I chose GOA because, first off, I like the team over there. That's a big thing. I'm a big uh, – Sam Paredes, who's the in charge of California, and I was on our board, and I have been friends for a number of years. There's a long story behind that. It's hilarious. Um, but if I bring it up, I might get fired. So uh, <laughs> my boss we don't was do involved. That. Yeah, my boss was involved in that story. But uh, it's a great story how I met the GOA team. I met Kaylee in 2022. We became friends. I've I've known everybody from the state side and everything since then. And when they had an opening and they called me, I said, yeah, I'm on. This is, this is the oh. org I want to fight with because it is no compromise. We're constantly fighting. We're actually restoring and getting the Second Amendment to where it's at. And at the end of the day, a lot of people – we say this and a lot of people look at us like we're funny – our goal is to restore the Second Amendment so strongly that we are out of a job, which is terrible for my job security. But at the end of the day, that's the win. That's what we want to do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, and in, you well, know, and in reality, that's a huge mountain. So, I mean, that's a huge mountain. It's, it's a huge mountain to climb. So if you can do that, I mean, you're almost at the end of it. It's, it's like Thanos, dude. You snapped your fingers and now you're sitting there watching the sunrise like, what do I do now? Like, that's a that's a big that's a big task. Unfortunately, we yeah. live in a world of constant infringement, and I don't think you're ever going to be out of a job, my brother. <laughs> I I hope to have have it done in my lifetime. By the time I retire, 
it, it's Let's done. Fucking but, uh, go. Well, John, with that, I mean, dude, you're, you're doing a good fight, but John, also, I mean, you won't be out of a job because, I mean, you also have a podcast, and here's the thing about podcasting that we love. Um, this is the one thing that I truly feel there's no competition in, and I, and I mean that in a way where there's room for all of us. There's a lot of two-way podcasts, but the thing is, there's lots of listeners, lots of different days, and no podcast is competition, meaning we all have room. We can come on, collab with each other. So, um, you know, I know you have your own podcast, uh, Stay the Second, and um, talk about that, man, because I, I, I love your podcast. I've watched a couple episodes, and mm-hmm. I'm definitely a fan. Yeah, so Stay the Second, um, funny backstory on Stay the Second. Uh, it was a brainchild of my boss, and uh, that was part of the reason why I got hired on is because I did YouTube for my previous company. So I did all our videos and did all the content for it. And uh, I get hired on. I talked to John Vallecco, who's the vice president. I talked to Eric Pratt, and I'm like, hired on and ready to go. And then I get a phone call, and they're like, hey, by the way, uh, you're doing this podcast. You got hired for this. I'm like, well, that wasn't brought up in my job interview, but let's go. Uh, <laughs> so the podcast, is it's it's really different than most podcasts. We talk a lot about the 2A from a company perspective. We get we want to humanize the, the brands and humanize the people behind the brands. I mean, we've had Adam Ranola from Century Arms. John Bailey from EOTech, Rachel Mahoney from Night Vision's been on. Uh, we've had YouTubers on like Ghost Tactical. We've had John, uh, John Level on. Uh, Heck Liberty yeah. Doll has been on. It's it's really humanizing the brands. And my favorite episode so far uh, is one of the most viewed episodes on our end. It's with Jamin, the owner of Palmetto State Armory. And he said some very, very strong things in that episode. Um, he may have called out the industry a little bit on pricing, but it. it's it's Jamin, uh, and he, he said something really strong, and it, it, that was one of those things where, you know, I really enjoyed that podcast because I got to talk to him. We got also the, another strong one was with uh, Jason, who just bought Watch, who's the new owner of Watchtower, Watchtower, Watch yeah, which is Watchtower now. Yep, and. Uh, that was a great episode talking with him. He wants to be the next big American gun company. He talks about, you know, how a lot of these gun companies are owned by or overseas or, you know, companies. You know, Browning, which is an American name, is owned by FN, and, or uh, actually it's owned by a company out of Belgium. Uh, mm-hmm. You look at Colt and CZ, they're owned, owned by CZ out of the Czech, Czech Republic. So he he wants to bring back that American uh, culture of building guns and being owned by Americans in in the states. And I I love doing the podcast. I have fun. My wife doesn't like it that much because I travel a lot. None of our go. wives like it. Yeah, I don't have a wife, so I'm okay. <laughs> I travel a lot for the podcast. So we're up, we film in on location in Myrtle Beach. Um, Dirty Myrtle. Yeah. <laughs> which I have to go in like two uh, two weeks to go back to go film some more, but it's it's crazy. She's like, okay, when are you leaving again? Oh, okay, you're gone. So it, it's I love doing it. I I got to meet people. A lot of the people who've been on the podcast have been friends of mine for a long year. Like I said, I've been in this industry for a long time. I've made a ton of friends. Uh, a lot of people look at this industry and go, wow, the firearms industry is huge. It really is. It, it's it's not. a small network of people who so know small. each other and and if you know one person you know 10 people because it's, it's a phone call away from knowing a marketing director over at this place or somebody moves so now you knew no new company and uh i'm very blessed to say that i'm friends with some of the biggest people in the industry just because of of being there so long and talking to them and um friendships i've made over the years like ari who was at when i first met ari he was at rainier now he's at uh primary weapon systems and ari story is another one that is worth a listen to if you go listen to the podcast so for sure it's one of those things like ws you, you know all these people and it's just it it's great time just having all these friends yeah that's kind of that was kind of our that was kind of our i guess our our goals in our podcast was kind of similar to what you're doing we want to humanize yeah the people behind the brands and we want to put the consumers more in touch and feel like they're a part of something, but we wanted to do it from the, you know, I'm an FFL. Adam is active duty military and Matt is a collector and just a connoisseur of all firearms. And it was like, Hey, let's just kind of start this and let's just build 
and grow as we go. And it's been really rewarding because I mean, like you said, I mean, we've had some, we've had some pretty big guests on. I mean, last week was just Dave Matheny with silencer shop and yeah. I mean, he's a super cool dude. Um, but we want, we want people like, we feel like we're the average Joes as well. And it's like, Hey, how can we get these people in touch? Because at the end of the day, everybody has their brand loyalty. Everybody has their, their favorites. And everybody also has what they think is, you know, not great. And, you know, they have their rights, their opinions, but in reality, uh, you know, there's still, there's so much regurgitation in the firearms industry that, uh, there are a few new things here and there, but for the most part, no one is really, there's a lot of innovation, don't get me wrong, but no one's reinventing the wheel at this point. So no. it's it's really interesting. I, I've got a couple of friends, just like you said, it's it's weird when I meet one guy and he works at yeah. this place. And then, you know, a year later, he's over here at this place and he says, oh, I'm so happy. This is where I want to be. But somebody offered him more money and now he's gone to this place. And you're like, yeah. Yeah, everybody just kind of bounces around. It's 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 interesting to see. Um, what has the reception been like personally for you as far as State of the Second goes? It's been great. I so it's funny. Uh, I've a, I'm a very outgoing person. My boss is a very outgoing person when it comes to events. She's very inward when we we, we hang out. Uh, we were we flew into in March. We flew into Myrtle to go. Uh, do the podcast and I'm sitting there waiting for her at the hotel and she comes up the elevator and she's talking to this guy and I'm like oh he must have noticed that you worked for GOA and wanted to talk no he recognized her from the podcast so she is like in a whole new world of like being recognized where I was like used to it because I was doing YouTube for the company so I would see people uh, the receptions were great. We went to the gathering with PSA, and I had like 200 people stop me and said, "Thank you for doing the podcast, doing that." And uh, even my friends are like, "Wow, that that episode was great," or "This episode was great," or "Hey, the, when can I be on the show?" So it's it's one of those things. So the reception has been so good from not only the industry, but also to the just like my friends who are are in the media and. Uh, the funniest one so far, the greatest reception is, uh, as you know, the other day we announced our title sponsor for our convention, which is Brownells. Yep. Part of the agreement for being the title sponsor is Pete has listened, Pete Brownell, who's the CEO of Brownells, has actually listened to Sid the Second and wants to be on. So in two weeks, I'm filming with Pete Brownell, who I've Kudos. known the name oh, yeah. for years. Uh -oh. And it's like... So cool. I get to actually sit down and have a conversation with That's Pete. Awesome. Where, where in previous years it's just been like, hey, I'm Pete Brownell, nice to meet you. Or, hey, I've, I've talked to like all my all the guys who previously worked at Brownells that I've been friends with. So I'm really excited that the, the podcast is growing. Um, we're averaging about 100,000 downloads right now. So oh, heck it's, yeah. it's really great. It's been a good reception from not only our members but from the industry side. Dude, that's amazing. I think we've that's had awesome. a similar experience. I mean, definitely not with the number of views and downloads, but approaching uh, approaching people from organizations and approaching uh, executives from some of these Second Amendment companies, it seems like it's a platform that a lot of them haven't been offered before in the past, and they're really excited to participate. They're like, yes, we would love to do that, and a lot of them seem really excited to come on a podcast even one as humble as ours they're like yeah i want to do that and they we we get to sit down and talk with some industry leaders like mike said we just had dave Matheny. that's that's like boom we've we, we've had some some huge guests that were just excited like genuinely excited to come on the show and and share their passion and i i yeah. think that it's a it's a platform that a lot of them haven't been offered in the past and and they're excited to do it so or you or you really get the cool. guys who love the attention like uh kb kevin brittingham you know <laughs> oh he's anytime such a whore, he's on, such an attention whore anytime, such an attention whore. anytime he's podcast. on a show it's a good time because he's going to talk a whole lot of shit to a whole lot of people when he doesn't care. <laughs> he's got his own podcast. podcast with more viewers and he still wanted to come on ours <laughs> I have a funny Kevin story. I'll have to tell you guys afterwards. It's a great Hell yeah. Kevin story. I would love to hear it. Dude, Kevin, but, Kevin, Kevin is awesome, dude. He's I bet a, alcohol he's a, was involved. I bet alcohol he's a friend was of the cool, show. Dude. He's yeah. a friend of the show, and you know we talk we talk quite a bit. He's a, he's awesome, KB. dude. We love him. Yeah. Well, it it's 
crazy to think. Like, I've been talking. So I started doing the podcast with. Uh, I started doing podcasting about a year ago with uh, Ghost Tactical, just hanging out and doing his show. Okay. And I started doing the podcast with uh, GOA. And the amount of companies who have, like, how do you start a podcast? How do you do this? The amount of companies that now want to do a podcast is insane. And uh, it was one of those platforms. It's got, like, its ebbs and flows with podcasts. Because I have sure. good friends with Sean Heron who runs the We Like Shooting Show. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, for years it was like, yeah, podcasts are the thing. And then it dipped down. And then 2020 hit. And everybody, because podcasts spiked again. And now they're still right. spiking. So it's crazy the ebbs and flows of podcasts, and a lot of people are like, "Hey, this is my opportunity to capture an audience for an hour where they can't go anywhere because they're stuck in a car." Most people listen in the car. There, you've got them a captured audience for an hour, unlike a YouTube video where you just click off. I think you're good yeah. too, and I think where the 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 situation you're in similar, you know, it's very similar to ours in the aspect of the only downside to a manufacturer having their own podcast unless it's maybe maybe a distributor could do something but a manufacturer the only tough thing is you know you can only talk about your product for so long yeah how many episodes can you give i mean it doesn't matter i mean maybe browning if you wanted to start from the history and keep going like past present future and just keep alternating that could be cool but you know just in general i mean if if eotech started a podcast how much can and what? I'm not I'm not picking on I'm just being about. honest. Like how much can you honestly on record talk about and then you know, how long can that how long can you sustain that before you have to bring a guest in and you don't want to bring competition in and you don't right. want to bring so it it's tough, but with you, what we do, what a lot of the other guys like we like shooting do, you know, we're we're fortunate enough that no matter what we like in this industry or dislike, we're we're open for business and first come first serve. Everybody has their right to come on and we can either debate about things or we can agree on things or we can do whatever, but it's, it's good, healthy conversation. It's fun. I mean, I think that's what the the listener likes. I've had more fun doing the the podcast than I've had doing YouTube videos. Like uh, I can actually have fun. Uh, It was funny. We, we, so I fly from the West coast to the East coast to film the podcast. So I am, already delirious as it is because uh we don't do daylight savings time where i'm at and uh it, i change time zones twice a year so uh flying over there i i get in and i'm a night owl and it's it's east coast time so i'm so exhausted i was exhausted the one we did it with uh jason from watchtower i was so exhausted i started like going on this adhd rant for like five minutes and he looks at me and he goes this is the most fun i've had doing anything this was fantastic i'm like i just went on an adhd rant talking about about young guns for 30 minutes and you you just sat there and 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 took it it. and you like it took it and you thought it was hilarious and i'm sitting here like wow i look super unprofessional but he that's the fun part about doing podcasts because it just a lot of people are nervous being in front of the camera but when you take away the camera and you're just recording and we film everything, but we just tell people like, "Hey, the cameras aren't on. We're we're recording this." Um, <laughs> lies, lies. Yeah. Um, they they tend to like peel away the layers and and talk and enjoy themselves, and that's that's the cool thing about podcasts because you're not there's not a lot of pressure there as there is like doing a doing a review or talking about like an an optic for twenty minutes. Yeah, well, it's about that, bringing the, yeah, the humanity. You bring the human aspect to it. It's conversation. And, and also like about podcasting, which everyone, everyone wants to start a podcast, right? Everyone's a podcaster. Mm-hmm. We, we say this, we're all podcasters. But you know this too, consistency, right? The hardest part about doing a con, and that's where we pride ourselves on and you pride yourself on, is can you do it consistently because your listeners want to see that? And that, that in my mind, is the thing that I think most people where they struggle with podcasting, want to be a podcaster. Okay, well, it's a job. It's a job. It's work. And do you treat it like work? And then are you going to do it every single week, no matter what? Yeah, that's a big thing. Just making sure, like even us, we were supposed to not film until after the convention. And then they called me and were like, hey, we're two episodes short. So we need you to come out and do stuff. I'm like, ah, all right, let's go. Let's do this. Yeah. I'm excited. Well, we we basically have to do that around our schedule too, and we looked into July and then August, of course, for your show, and we're looking at the, all the places we're going, and then like real person vacation, 
like, hey, we're unplugging. It's like, man, we just can't have a blank week. Like, we got to start banking more. Like, let's add a couple more to the to the you know to the stable because otherwise, we're we're either not going to have a show or we're going to put something together last minute and it's not going to matter to anybody. Um, but I do want to touch back on um, on the GOA founders again. You know, Larry Pratt, um, H.L. Richardson, both starting out. You know, GOA founded in California. I think it's kind of crazy now how the tides have shifted uh, as far as, you know, now California as anti-firearm as they seem uh, and anti-firearm the the government is there. I think it's just crazy how those views have shifted compared to when GOA was founded. Um, You know, what are your thoughts on, you know, the current state of that? Well, we have a the current state of California. We have a California team that just works in California. So that would be Sam Preddy's, um, our friend, my friend Alex works over there. Um, we have a team dedicated to California who's constantly there fighting for that. We got a big win in California by being able able to get more guns on the roster. We had a big mm-hmm. win with the my favorite Sam Preddy's. A thing that he did in California, he opened his shirt off during the body armor uh, debate and had his body armor on underneath his shirt in oh, front yeah. of in front of like the house in California. And uh-huh. you know, California is we're, we're slowly we we've got some good judges over there um, getting bringing back some of the two A rights, but we have to you know we had Freedom Week and got, had to pause that because. We, we have to constantly fight in California. That's why we have that team over there just constantly fighting and at the Hill. They were just at the, the California Hill about a week ago. They got there to go fight this anti-gun bill, and they had pulled it off the, the docket 30 minutes before they got there. And so they got there. We're like, hey, we're here to fight this, this bill in this docket. And they're like, well, it already got pulled off. We're not going to do it anymore. And we're like, cool, so we got to win. Yeah. So it, it, that's why I'm so proud of our team there who is constantly doing stuff. And that's one of the few states that we actually have a team. Con- that and Texas There's a, two of the states that are constantly doing fights on our behalf. Hell yeah. Well, I'm ready to get into the fun stuff. I'm yeah. ready to get into August, man. Adam, start it out, man. Heck yeah, man. So, like, what's this goal? What's goals? And, um, just talk about it. Like we, we know it's coming up. We've been pushing the goals have been pushed, but what's uh and it's gonna be Knoxville in August, so what what do we got going on there? And whiskey so, and windage is going. Yeah. <laughs> so goals is gun owners advocacy and leadership summit. Uh it is a convention of sorts. It's also a summit of sorts. So it's it's a combination. It's not your grandfather, granddaddy's uh two A show. Um we took every complaint that we've heard from every show over the years, everything that everybody said, and we decided, hey, this is our time to do a show. We're going to do it. And so we decided to do it. Uh, when I got hired on, that was my first conversation I had with Eric Pratt and John Valleca was, hey, it's time for us to do a convention. I did not think I would be the one who had to plan the convention. You, you know? spoke up. You spoke yeah, up. Yeah, you were the loudest voice. You did it. So, so the we, nail that sticks out gets, gets hammered down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, first things first, let's talk about why Knoxville. Knoxville is East Tennessee. It's a, it's a big but small city. Everybody knows Knoxville for UT. That's, a, that's it, right? So, we picked Knoxville because that is our highest density of members. That Within a 300-mile huh. radius of there is East Tennessee, uh, Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina. Our members are really strong in that area. So that that's step one. We looked at five other places. It was Cleveland, Columbus, uh, St. Louis, uh, Phoenix, and a couple. There was a couple and Savannah. So we looked at all these places and we were like, okay, they have. Let's see, Columbus. The industry doesn't want to go to Columbus. St. Louis. I don't want to go to St. Louis. Phoenix. Yeah, you got to get shot there. Yeah, <laughs> Phoenix in August. Even though I would love that, it's too hot. Oh um, God, yes. Oh yeah. God. Cleveland's got the convention center, but it's union, and Knoxville's got a non-union convention center. 
So we went with the non-union convention center for our, our industry folks. That's a big deal for them because they have to pay out the wazoo at SHOT Show and, and Vegas and all these other convention centers that are unionized. So we've got a non-union convention center. We're 30 minutes away, 30 to 40 minutes away from the Great Smoky Mountains. Yep. So you get, there's plenty of places to go hang out after the show. Bring your family down, enjoy. So it's very family friendly. We actually have kids areas inside the show floor that we're going to be doing some cool things. We're going to have our coloring contest. We're going to have a bunch of stuff going on for kids on the show floor. So parents, bring your kids. This is a kid friendly environment. Matt, we got a spot for you, bro. I'm going to win the coloring contest, okay? <laughs> go. I got a big ass box of crayons. One color. <laughs> no. I got the big one, the 200 oh. colors. There you go. <laughs> so not only that, but then we decided, okay, well, what makes what's going to make this different? So we got companies that are going to have new products and stuff on the show floor. That's not different than any other show. Okay, well, right. let's do a main stage. So we did a main stage that's part of the show floor that's going to be live streamed and simulcast throughout the convention center while this is going on. Oh, wow. wow. We're going to have panels, so you're going to be able to talk to some of your favorite content creators. You're going to be able to talk to uh, hunter, hunter uh, hunting groups to talk about hunting stuff. We're going to have a panel on you know, how to become a 2A at better 2A advocate, how to do this, a state-by-state -state panel, like learn how to become a, a, a good 2A advocate, learn about what's going on in your state. So that's going to be simulcast. Not only that, but we're going to have some big speaking names we've got lined up. So there's going to be 15 to 20 minute talks where you can sit there and learn and listen. You, this is your opportunity to, during these panels, we've got actually a microphone that's a, like a ball. And we're going to throw it around the stage and people can grab it, squeeze it, and ask their questions. So this is one of the things that I was really proud about doing is being able to have people ask questions in an environment where they want to learn something. Um, not only that, but you're going to be able to go down to the show floor, and let's just say you're, you're not going to be able to catch a panel. Well, there's going to be TV right there simulcasting that. Hey, I can't make it because, you know, I got stuck in Oregon or, or Colorado or somewhere out west. Well, hey, this is going to be live stream. You can watch the panels yeah. as they go on. That's cool. So, so not only that, we, t we talked about doing that. We're really excited about that. But from the vendor's perspective, we've got a vendor only a vendor lounge where you can actually bring media guys into your vendor lounge to talk. Media guys, you can bring vendor guys into your media lounge to talk, which is not done at any other show. It's a media lounge, and that's it. We're allowing people to go around. We've got spots for vendors to hang out. The show is three days. Historically, Friday's kind of a dead day for shows. Everybody's at work. Yeah. So what we did was go, okay, Friday we're going to let vendors and media go walk around and enjoy the show. That way you can film content, get connections, network, vendors. The biggest complaint I've heard from vendors, and me being a vendor previously for Faxon, was I don't get to enjoy a show. I go there and I work, and I work and I work and I work, and then I'm done and I don't get to see all the cool stuff. Friday's your day to walk around and actually check out the show. And actually hang out and get your press done. Have somebody at the booth to get press done and then swap out and rotate. Uh, from a vendor perspective, it's a non-union convention center, so that helps save money. Uh, we're trying to make this very ROI positive. Also for vendors, so hey, you can sell on the show floor. If it's an FFL item, it's got to go through QR code. That's just the rules of the convention center. Same thing with ammo, but products like accessories, barrels, things like that, you can sell right there on the show floor. Oh, and wow. you can buy stuff. And if you're interested in something, you know, the vendor might have a show deal. You could scan it. We've got new product launches happening. We're giving vendors two minutes on the main, two to three minutes on the main stage to talk about their new product launches. So say you can't be at the show floor. Now you're getting all the information while it's happening from the vendors as they come up on the stage to talk and give their ability to push their company and drive traffic to their booth, which is not done at any other show. So awesome. I was going to say, so this, this, this episode is going to drop on... Wednesday of next week. So let me make sure I'm on the dates here because I don't want to interfere with what you guys are saying. So this is going to drop on June 5th. So as far as what you can talk about about vendors, um, you know, 
what vendors what vendors can we talk about that'll be there well let's see uh canic and century arms will be there car arms will be there palmetto state armory is going to be there smith and weston's going to be there faxon's going to be there um i'm pulling up the the list right here yeah go ahead premier body armor uh okay vertex uh victos uh KCI Mags, Anderson Manufacturing, High Point, Ross Martin, Watchtower, ETS Mags, Infinity Defense, Rugged Rare, um, Fight Light Industries is going to be there. Uh, oh, SPS hell. Imports is going to be there. L- my favorite company so far, Liberty Manufacturing, that's making a pen gun that's going to be there. IWI <laughs> is going to be there. Stroop Knives is going to be there. Samson Manufacturing, I mean, uh, uh, Swamp Fox Optics, Gideon Optics, Tract Optics. Uh, my medic's going to be doing a stop the bleed class while they're there. Heck yeah! Uh, oh, that's Ammo cool squared's well. going to be there. Uh, X uh, Tech Tactical's going to be there. Reaper Systems is going to be there. Uh, some of these boosts. Otis is going to be there. SDI uh, Fat Tack Holsters of my buddy Josh over at uh, Black Diamond Guns and Gear is going to be there. Q is going to be there. Ranger Point Precision's going to be there. Uh, DS Arms is going to be there. I still have a number of booths to fill, but the, I've got about a hundred vendors, including Shield Arms. Uh, Henry's going to be there. Mm-hmm. American Tactical is going to be there. Nine Lines going to be there. Rainier is going to be there. Mm-hmm. Cox Arms is going to be there, which is a smaller company with great guys over there. Yeah. Kinetic Development Group, JX Tactical, Mission First Tactical. Um, Dude, that's so, awesome. Yeah. It, it it's, it's filling up. There's a lot of big companies there. We're still in talks with some companies to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's about 100 plus vendors, and we're super excited, including our friends over at Battle Buddy 3 Gun. It's going to be there. They're going to have a setup where you can actually uh, do a simulation of one of their matches in a wheelchair, which is really Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. So they've got a 10 by 30 booth where you're going to be able to push somebody through a course of fire with a with a Mantis system on it and, and learn how awesome. to shoot their thing. And uh, you may, there's a there's kind of an award event that happens around SHOT Show. Mm-hmm. Um, you may be able to start voting. I can't say. Oh, uh, can't voting. say for sure yet or no. not. Yeah, start getting your nominees in for that big event. Yeah. Uh, so, that's pretty cool. That's interesting. pretty cool. Interesting. Interesting. And yeah. and you're also having those panels too. Um, I saw I saw on the website you've got some panels where you're going to have some speakers and all that. That's I just think it's a really cool thing and it's almost perfect timing. Um, I don't want to mention the guys that are moving to Atlanta next year, but you're you're almost set up in a perfect spot where it's almost half a year away from shot, and it's East Coast. Yeah, Mark. So it's it's kind of a a halfway point before the 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 biggest industry show in the U.S. But I also think that being on the East Coast is a really smart move because yeah. you're going to get a lot of people that normally don't go all the way across country for a shot to to come here. So I think that's I think it's a big deal. And another thing, like we kind of said earlier, you know, with with Shot Show, um, we talked. A lot of the guests we talk to more and more every year, you know, people that aren't in the industry find their way into SHOT Show anyway. And so mm-hmm. I think this one being open to the public is really cool. Um, and again, you know, the only thing you have to be is a GOA member and GOA membership is as little as 25 bucks, I think is what it is for a year. So, um, Really, in my in my perspective, it's like a what are you waiting on? Then I mean, twenty five bucks. You can't. Even, I don't even think you can go to a movie and get popcorn for twenty five bucks anymore. So like, nope. you actually get to go somewhere. You get to go to a you know a <coughs> Gun Owners of America Summit. You get to talk about two A advocacy. You get to see you know you get to see equipment. You get to see parts. You get to see products, and you also get to see people and build those connections. I mean, I think it's really cool what y'all are doing. Yeah, I'm super excited about it. I mean, not only that, but Friday night there's going to be a, a free comedy show, so you can go mm. in. Tickets are, are limited, so as soon as that gets announced, make sure you get your tickets for the comedy show. It's Heck gonna yeah. be So you pick up your badge, go to the comedy show, and hang out Friday night. Saturday we're gonna, night we're going to have a free concert. 
So go same thing. Go get you those tickets as soon as those concerts are announced. But it's a thing to hang out to her. And then Sunday night, there's going to be something special that's going on Sunday night after the show's over. And unlike, you know, some shows that have uh, Friday open, we have Friday closed, but we have extended our hours on Saturday for everybody to come Saturday too. So Saturday, it's 9 to 7. So it's a long day for vendors, but it's also a really long day for people who want to attend. It's a day that you can go in and hang out all day or hang out part of the day and separate between Saturday and Sunday. And Sunday, we're only going 9 to 4. So it's a short day Sunday, but it's a long day Saturday. So go enjoy. And we're also going to be we're working with a company right now to get a cigar lounge outside. So we're going to get a cigar lounge right outside of the convention center to hang out and chat. You know, we're, we've thought of every little thing we can think of, but there's always room for improvement. So if you go to the show, we're, we are listening to everybody who comes, between media and vendors and everything, to go to the show and just enjoy it and have it, like, be the most ROI positive, not only for vendors and media, but also for people attending. And uh, there may be some really, really cool products dropping at our show. I can't say... That's maybe. exciting, though. That's exciting, because yeah. typically... Typically, with the with the products, they drop it, you know, shot or they shot, drop shot. in a couple months leading up to it, just so you start getting that buzz going. But with the amount of shows that are happening now, I think that products are just going to start. You know, if your product is 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 a great drop, but you don't want to compete with everybody else that's dropping at the same time, it's kind of smart to drop them earlier in the year. And I think that you know, dropping them at another show is going to be, you know, it's a great idea. Yeah, especially since August is right around the beginning of when things start spinning back up for the industry. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's another reason why I pick August because I was like, hey, this is your opportunity to drop stuff for that fall pickup that we know. Drop your hunting stuff. Drop yep. your, you know, your new product right before you go into it because you know that's the that's the buying time of year for the industry, guys. Sure. Yeah, so I mean, Mike hit it on a little bit, and uh, John, I want to go with like we said. If you're a GOA member, you can uh, tickets are free. But like, how how does one as a GOA member? What do they need to do to get tickets? So to pre-register to get tickets, you go to gunners.org/goals, G-O-A-L-S, and you can pre-register there. We've got a couple hotel blocks and discounts for hotels there. We also have just added more hotels. Should be added here before this drops and we'll have more hotels we've actually expanded out to a 10 mile radius because we sold out of the first two hotels so nice. that's going to get expanded out we're also going to have um so you can pre-register there you can p- buy your tickets at the door uh we highly recommend that you pre-register that way you can get in and get stuff done uh there's a little discount if you pre-register to it'll be like 20 bucks instead of 25 so say five dollars uh, not only that, but you're also going to be able, we're working with the city of Knoxville to be able to pick up badges at the airport, be able to pick up badges Friday before the show opens. So the show's going to open to people to pick up badges ahead of time. Media guys will get their badges either Friday or Thursday. They can come to, there's an exclusive media event going on Thursday, so you can pick up your badges at that event and get stuff going there. So it's, it's, we're trying to make it super easy and, uh, but we, uh, we highly recommend that you pre-register. That way we can get to, uh, an accurate count of everybody who's showing up. I like this because it seems like you guys are taking all of your previous experiences from all these other shows. Yeah. And you're doing the things you like. You're trying to you know, eliminate the aspects that you weren't a fan of. And then add in your own little twists to say, if you know, just like everyone should. If I'm putting on a show... Or I'm putting on a, you know, a, a whatever, a range day, a a, a seminar, a panel, a, some, whatever it is, like, what would I do? How would I do it? So I think it's great you're putting your own twist on it. And, dude, it sounds like a whole lot of fun. Are you guys anticipating a lot of people? We're hoping for 25000 plus a day. We're anticipating Oof. about that much. So it is a first show show. So, you know, a lot of the companies will... If, you, if there's a company listening to this, we still have room for you to come in. Uh, but we're, we are getting some pushback on that and those numbers because it is a first-year show. But we're yeah. expecting about 25000 plus a day for the, the two days that the show is open. We're also, you know, you brought up, you know, picking and choosing what you like and don't like from show. We went through every vendor survey 
from two different shows and every attendee survey from two different shows and found what people liked and didn't like and what was the biggest complaint and found those and go, okay, this is what we got to do. We need to do this. We need to do that. And, you know, right now, even in Knoxville, we still have room to grow and expand the show in following years. So there's there's chances we're going to bring in companies that you probably never heard of and, and things that you never would think of in the 2A space. There's talks about next year bringing in some overlanding things to go do overlanding stuff outside. I love that. I love that. So it's, it, we're looking at everything like, hey, how can we broaden our community, bring in people who are 2A people and just bring them all to one area, not only to walk around a convention, but also learn and educate themselves and become and build these 2A advocates to go out. And that's why we're doing the free concerts, and that's why we're doing the free uh, comedy show and things, things to get you entertained. And, hey, if you're bored, go down to Dollywood. It's right there. Or make this a family <laughs> trip. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's like, we, we, hey, you shouldn't be bored at the show, but, like, go – there's things to do. Make this a family event. You know, right now our average registration age is about the age of 30. So we're a young demographic, which is great for, for us. Uh, but this is not your, uh, how do I put it, your typical show. This will be more fun, more enjoyable, more time to educate yourself, more time to go listen to the panels. It's not just sitting around and walking around and looking at the, all the gun companies. This is a big part of it. But also go sit on a panel. Go listen to things. There's two rooms with panels going on. There's two rooms with education going on. There's free Stop the Bleed classes going on. There's free seminars going on from some of the people who are doing uh, time at the show. So there's there's three places. There's a classroom to learn. So we're trying to make this the best possible show for everybody. John, it I mean, it's advertised right now as the first annual. So um, obviously, you guys are. I, I mean, this one hasn't even been been uh, pulled off yet. But you're already looking to the future. Um, I mean, are, are is it fair to fair to expect that this is going to be an annual thing? Yeah. So this is our plan to be, make it an annual thing. We've already hit the numbers we need to hit to go on to next year which is fantastic already on our end but yeah this is going to be an annual thing it's going to be around the same time every year in august for at least the first two to three years it'll be in knoxville Um, and then after that we might move it to somewhere else non-union convention centers are really hard to find but we still have room to grow in knoxville so it that's the plan to, to keep this as a annual event for everybody to come in at time. Good. Hell yeah. Um, so like, let's get back to GOA real quick before we close out today. And like, I know obviously how we talk about advocacy and people being part of the two A, and I, you know, everyone can be a GOA member, but like, like what, what can people do to really help GOA besides just being a member? Like what, how do we get GOA to grow? How do we get this being like the like back? Like, I, I don't want to say the other name of the other company, but we've talked about NRA and we know where NRA is at. But back in the day, like you go back 40, 50 years ago, everyone, I'm an NRA member. Our family's NRA for life. Right. So how do we get GOA to that point now, which we were getting there, but how do we grow GOA further? Just recommend us to your friends. Tell your friends about GOA and what we do and how we fight. You know, that's the big thing. We're grassroots. We're big, but we're still, we're at uh, about 2.5 million members and growing. But we okay. are still a grassroots organization. We, you know, become a GOA member. Learn how to become a better 2A advocate. Highly recommend you go to lobby days. I just did my first lobby day where I live, and I really enjoyed it. If you want to read, I got two books for you all to read. This one is from H.L. Richardson. It's called <laughs> Confrontational Politics. This is a great book to read. The other one is called Firing Back, and it's by Eric Pratt. Both great books to read to become a better 2A advocate but you know join GOA your $20 go towards your $25 a year go towards fights I mean we put all our money where our mouth is and we fight constantly and and a lot of people when we announced the show they were like hey you guys are spending all this money on the show and not on lawsuits well the show is being funded by the industry that comes out of industry partnerships and that comes out of things like that to grow that show. 
all of your donations are going to go towards 2A fights. We're not going to raffle you off a truck. We're not going to raffle you off a thing. We do giveaways, yes, but we're not. Those are donated to us by the industry. Right, so right. We are. We take your donation, and you are guaranteed that your donation is going towards the fight. I want to say right now about 95 percent of the donations go to the fight the other five percent goes to make sure that i have food in my belly right you have to you have to <laughs> that's super but, important to me but to there's no letter that there's yeah. not millions and millions of dollars going to somebody retiring from the organization as as a retirement fund shots fired <laughs> Or, or uh, private jets, drink water. or I private jets, or mean, private jets yeah, flying them around the world. Jets or, or, or. <laughs> all right, so I gotta tell a funny story. So somebody said that Eric Pratt has a, a private jet, and our 990, which is what all nonprofit organizations have to go, it's very public. And Eric Pratt's salary is very public. All our VPs' salary is very public. Eric Pratt does not. He flies commercial. He flies coach. And he has a his mode of travel is a uh, sixteen passenger van because Eric has eleven children. Uh, he's a big family. Good God! And uh, same thing with John Valleco. He drives a, a, a Pontiac from I think Pontiac. Just so y'all know, for a while, so. Pontiacs they don't even make Pontiacs anymore. They're coming back. <laughs> They're coming back. They're coming back. They're, they have said they're bringing back the screaming chicken. We'll uh-huh. see. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> the screaming chicken. I think it's great, but you know the the thing I'll challenge all the listeners to do, um, because it's as you know, um, when it comes to social media, it's hard to it's hard to get anybody to do anything for you on social media. Even if you say, "Hey, follow me," it's oh, so hard for someone just to hit follow. Um, but what I like about GOA and what I like about the fight you guys do is you know there's a couple different levels of the donations and I want to get into that in just a second and I want you to explain it if you can but in reality 25 bucks gets you in as a member for a whole year and I'm not going to talk about all the ways we waste just about everybody in America wastes $25 on other dumb stuff Um, box of 9 mils almost that much but but yeah i mean just you know it, there's so many ways to make if, if if you can't come up with 25 bucks in this day and age over the course of a year uh we've got we've got bigger issues uh at hand but why don't you go ahead and talk about how people can help with goa with that membership and if there's any other ways to help yeah so first off $25 can't even buy a dinner for two at McDonald's anymore. I just got to say that now. Nope. Uh, so you're you're spending about, don't go to McDonald's one one time and you've, you've got your $25 to spend on GOA. So yearly membership, $25. We have our life membership, which is $1,000. So that's your life donation. We also have our Patriot level membership, which is a specific donation that you would like to donate every month. And in those uh, benefits for being a Patriot member and a life member at goals, you will guys will have a spot dedicated to you to go hang out and chill. That's we have our Patriot member lounge and our life member lounge where those can go. So that's an added bonus. The other thing that you can do to help support GOA, and we get this a lot, is we get people who donate guns to us when they pass away. We've got estates that come to us. Um, we have high dollar donors that come to us. Any donation at any time of the year is always a welcome donation, and we will use that money to fight. I mean, lawyers aren't cheap. uh, Oh, they're not. Ask my (laughs) ex-wife. Shots fired. It it is. There is a number of ways to donate. You can go to our website, gunners.org. You can sign up to become a member. You can donate straight through there. You can call the office and talk to somebody on how to donate there's a number of things you can do to donate to goa and support us show up to an our show up to our event show up to goals that's supporting us yeah. showing up to any of the events we go to stop by say hi talk to us we are constantly at events i think our calendar right now we have over 120 events throughout the year wow. uh, we actually have people next weekend in utah for shootah Go if you're in Utah next week. Go stop by and say hi to them. We've got people like I said. I'm at the gathering 
you know, listen to our podcast, go to our YouTube channel, learn, become a better advocate. You know, that's that's a big thing. But giving that monetary donation, I'm not going to sit here and beg you for it and plead for it, but it does help us with the fight and it gets you into goals for free. So that's a, that's a big thing is you get to go to one of the biggest conventions of the year, hang out, talk to a bunch of gun companies, see the people that you want to see, especially the media people that you want to see, get to talk to Eric Pratt himself who will be there, get to talk to our president, Tim Macy, who will be there. This is your chance to talk to some of the biggest names into a advocacy and learn from them and educate yourself and sit there and have a good time. Amen. Man, that's awesome. I love hearing that. I, I love what GOA is about. Like I said, we're all GOA members as well. We're going to be there. I, uh, John, I can't wait to meet you in person when we're there, and it's going to be a great time. Um, we're, we're, we're so excited because this, you know, we've done a couple shows before, and – Everything you're saying, it seems like you, like you said, you're taking the best of all the shows, bring them together, and it's going to be a great time. So, um, guys, I got nothing else. What do y'all got today? Man, before we get out, man, John, take time, uh, plug the channel, plug the podcast, plug where people can find you, do yeah. all that, do all the normal closeout stuff, man. All right. So, first off, you can find us at uh, Gun Owners of America on Instagram, Twitter, and facebook as well as youtube you can find state of the second podcast on all podcasting hosts as well as we have our own youtube channel and instagram page called state of the second all spelled out um you can also find us on uh instagram twitter tiktok and a couple other pages that we have for state of the second you can find me personally on my instagram which is j-o-n-f-o-n-10 you can also find me on my YouTube channel, which is Fully Loaded Reviews. Uh, that's something I do on the side for fun. And then you can also go to goals underscore con to follow everything up to date on the convention. Like I said, like you guys said, we just did a post today. Big announcement coming Monday of all most of the companies that are attending. Not all, but most of them. And we're very proud to have Brownells as our title sponsor for the show. So good on Pete for stepping up and taking the title sponsor for the show. Oh, yeah. Awesome, man. Well, guys, once again, uh, the uh, the Goal Summit is August 17th and 18th, um, open to the general public Saturday, Sunday uh, at the Knoxville Convention Center. If you need more information, uh, we'll pop a link in on the bio as far as the website. And other than that, man, I got nothing. Matt, you got anything? If not, Dude. sign us out. Hey, if, if you want to know, show up to Goals. You're going to catch John there. You catch myself, Adam, <clears throat> Mike. Uh, so all of whiskey and windage is going to be at the Gold Summit, um, as well as a lot of industry leaders, a lot of influencers in the industry. I'm super stoked for the event. And, uh, John, we appreciate you taking the time to join us and uh, talk to the people about it. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me. And I have to make this known before I forget. It is encouraged to carry at our show we fought very no! very hard with the convention center so if you go to the knoxville convention i'm flying website, from idaho to tennessee with a firearm just to carry at your show so what? we if you go to the knoxville convention center website it will say that it is a gun-free zone we fought with them we were about to pull the show out of knoxville convention center because they weren't going to allow concealed carry we are the only show at the knoxville convention center where you can lawfully conceal carry so i want to make that known that do not go to the knoxville convention center website it does say no lawful concealed carry we fought with that that is in our contract it is encouraged to Love it. Cancel carry your firearm at the Knoxville Convention. God bless the Second Amendment and GOA. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Well, John, man, we appreciate it, brother. And, uh, man, we look forward to meeting you in person uh, in August. Look forward to it, guys. Appreciate awesome. It. Later. We do want to thank John from GOA for coming <laughs> on, talking to us about his story, also GOA in general, and most importantly, the uh, the goal summit that is going to be happening in Knoxville in August the seventeenth and eighteenth I do believe um, tickets are still available um, it's twenty five bucks which is your GOA membership uh, you can go ahead and just do that now and bring your 
GOA identification number in, and that'll get you into the show. Uh, right. Like he said, man, it's it's going to be a good time. There's going to be a lot of vendors. There's going to be a lot of panels, lots of stuff going on. So definitely check them out. So um, Matt, Adam, you guys good? You got anything? We're good. Just remember, come through the GOA event and see Whiskey and Windage. We're going to be in attendance, y'all. So come check us out. Yeah. And uh, so on behalf of Matt and Adam, I am Mike from Whiskey and Windage. And as Adam always says, man, you know, stay safe, be dangerous, carry something and do something different. Fuck, I don't remember, but we'll talk soon. Uh-huh.